Howdy, howdy, howdy. Welcome on back to the Lake Life Family Channel, everybody. After dark. After dark. It's actually daytime right now. Uh, we've got some baby sitting help. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we haven't been here in a minute. And we're going to talk about that today. Been seeing some comments on the Instagram page. Yeah. Where are you guys? What's going on? What's going on? Uh, we've had some things going on. So it's nice to see those comments though. It's nice to see that y'all are you still wanting care. us to come back. I know a lot of y'all are like, I hope everything's okay. We haven't seen y'all in a little while. Uh, things are okay now. And yeah. So we're going we're gonna to talk about uh, what's been going on and just kind of why we've taken a little break for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, without further ado, let's, let's get into get it. Get into it. So the last video y'all saw, it was happy, good times at the beach really good times uh, and when we got back uh, something occurred with the chickens we're gonna be going in to uh, more in-depth on the next video but uh, basically our entire flock got infected <laughs> they're not doing uh, so hot right now yeah yeah so we're still kind of going going through that we're gonna keep y'all abreast Get it, you know, chicken, chicken breast. breast. Ah. <laughs> We're gonna keep y'all abreast of that uh, coming up on the next video, but we also had something else happen. So, oh my gosh, should we even tell them about like me, my my me medical update? What happened with you? As well. Well, my I am oh, no growth. Hard. Yeah, I guess they have. So this is kind of like that. the catalyst of the thing here that we're gonna the big thing we're gonna get into. But uh, I haven't shared this. I got a checkup, like couple months ago mm -hmm, for uh, so I had radiation in my brain last year last year last October and so it was time for me to get uh, an, uh, an update on that from the doctor the goal has been to basically freeze the remaining tumor in my brain uh, to stop all the growth and before that the last time I've gotten a checkup there was a little bit of growth and so they decided to go ahead and do the radiation and I got checked up uh, fantastic good news no more growth. No more growth. It's and like it, the best news that you can possibly think I was of. really nervous. You yeah. know, 2020 has just been a year. Yeah. I was like, well, here we go. Here we go. Because you don't bit. know. You can't, you can't feel it. Like, you can't feel it growing. can't feel it. It's on a part of my brain. And well, basically, they can't touch it with, with a knife. You can't touch that area. Optic nerve. You just can't get in there and touch it. Uh, so, the radiation basically froze it in time. And in fact... Uh, there was one, like a one millimeter shrinkage, which is fantastic. You know, some shrinkage. Yeah. Which normally isn't good on a guy, but, <laughs> but, it's but great. in this case, in this case, in this case, we want it. It was like raisin, you know, raisin shrinking in there. So, uh, fantastic news. We got that news, uh, very stoked. And they were like, you know what? We need to, we need to grow this family yeah. again, because the last time after I had my surgery, I had the brain tumor removed. We're like, you know what? Let's have a baby, and we did. <laughs> well, we waited until you were off your meds first right, before right. we had. Yeah, it. I wasn't. I waited till my skull cap sealed up, and oh. then and then we were able to uh, uh, have our first child. You know her as little Emmy. Yeah, it's time. and we it's were round two. About Good it. news. Let's go. I I also like come back from the Elkwoods. I felt pretty uh, pretty manly. <laughs> you know, trying to have a boy. It's like you know, I've been in the Elkwoods. Unsuccessful, but um, I've been deer hunting a lot. I was like, man, I'm feeling more manly. I feel more manly right now. I'll kill a few deer and just have a boy. You can tell somebody wanted to have a boy. Yeah. Yes. So it was like, it was kind of like we try now to have like the best certainty of having a boy. We both agreed. It was it was time. So you want to tell the rest of the, the tale? Sure. So and, uh, let me just preface this, uh -huh. by the way, not to cut you off again. But, um, you know, the brain tumor thing. When something happens like that, it's sort of embarrassing and you want to like tuck in and just, um, you don't really want to tell the world about it. You know, you're kind of scared, you're embarrassed. I told, I told everyone and, uh, it wound up helping a lot of people. Um, so just to preface that, that's why we're even talking about this. And so anyway, yeah, so go forth. You probably already have. That was a good preface. On, um, so we, like Justin said, we, we were trying to have a kid, and I think the last time, the last time that we talked to you guys, we were, we were on the fence and we were trying, and, you know, several weeks ago we found out that we were, we were pregnant, I was yeah. pregnant, Yeah. <laughs> and we were really I excited, <laughs> we were really excited, 
Um, but we kind of waited to tell. We were hoping that one of our next videos was going to be telling you guys um, and telling our friends and telling family. So unfortunately, something happened, as you guys will probably guess by now, is that I had a miscarriage. And at first, we kind of didn't want to tell anybody. The only person, the only people that really knew was his parents and my parents. Um, and we'll get into the whole story about how it happened and everything like that, because I feel like it's an important thing to share. Um, at first, we didn't want to say anything to you guys, but I feel that it's important to talk about it because it, it happens. It's more common it's than very common. we realized. And it so. happens, and it's a, it's a terrible thing to go through, and um, everybody experiences it differently. But I think in order to help you guys or to help anybody out there, somebody might need to listen to this and understand that it, it happens. Well, tell, tell, tell us how it happens because <laughs> it wasn't pretty. Um, I feel, I'm, from my experience... How I've, far along were you? I was seven weeks. Um, I was about to hit eight weeks. And we we had a slight scare on a random Tuesday. I'm like, I'm like shaking, telling you this. So if I sound very flustered, it's... She was scared. It was scary. Um, so on a random Tuesday, I had a very small blood clot. Immediately, my heart just sank. Because that's like your number one... Uh, thing to look for for a miscarriage and everything was going along great. I felt great you guys like my pregnancy For seven weeks. I had a lot of energy. I didn't have any nausea I wasn't having any cramps not like I did with Emmy. So I was like, I feel great This is gonna be a great pregnancy, you know, I'm gonna be active and working out and and I did and that was a very good thing to do um, But then when I saw that blood clot, I was like my heart just sank and I just knew something was wrong you know, called up the doctors and the doctors were like, you know what, if you're not having any cramps, if you're not um, bleeding or anything like that, if that's the only thing that you saw, I'm not worried. So I was like, okay, good news. Let's continue about our business. And then two days later, I had the same thing happen. Another small blood clot. So at this point, I was just like, oh no. We were traveling out of town at yeah, that point. We were, we were going, we were traveling. We hadn't told my parents yet. Um, so we were even like, do we tell them? Do we even like share this news? Because just it, something, something was wrong. And we just knew it in our gut instincts, even though the doctors were saying that it's not that big of a deal. Um, and I did, I, I had a doctor's appointment that Monday, that, the following to Monday. To go do our first sonogram. Yeah. So we hadn't even seen the baby at this point. And um, I was like, you know what? I'll just wait until the doctor's appointment. Friday morning, Justin and I were like, you know what? Let's go for a walk. And we just needed to get out and get some fresh air. And we did, we went on like a three mile walk, but it wasn't anything like extraneous. It just felt really good. I felt great on the walk. Um, felt good to move your body, get the blood flowing. <laughs> and then yeah, it did. It did. When we got back home, you guys, like it was immediate massive cramping for me. I just did not feel good. I was cramping up. My body was cramping up. And at this moment, this might be a little TMI for you guys, but I just started bleeding very profusely and I had to call the doctors and because I have a negative blood type, they said that I needed to get to the doctors ASAP for a blood, for a Rogam shot. Yeah, this, that's really important. Um, people that are yes. trying to get pregnant definitely need to know this because we had no idea. Well, yeah. when I had Emmy, I had to get the Rogam shot too. It's basically so that whatever blood type your baby has, your body doesn't create antibodies. So it's only on negative only blood negative. types. Okay, so because we were out of town and because I wasn't close to my um, OBGYN, I had to go into the ER and get like an immediate Rogam shot and them check me out because I was bleeding so bad. It that's, wasn't, what, what, that's what was suggested by... It was, yeah, when I called them yeah. and they said, this is what you need to do. Um, that was their counsel. So here we are, we're in the ER and I'm just basically like bleeding everywhere. Yeah, I'm freaking out, you know, and she, she kind of already knows like, hey, I've, I've lost a baby and I'm like yeah. holding on to hope like, no. Yeah, it's pretty obvious at no. this point, like what's happening. I was thinking that your body was fighting the baby because you hadn't had the Rogan uh, yet. Oh, yeah. And you know, there's this out. battle going on. It was, y'all. It was a battle like in my body because like I was having contractions. I was having contractions right there in the ER on the bed, and I was like, "What's happening?" And it was, it was traumatic. I mean, I know a lot of people do have miscarriages, and a lot of people don't 
um, don't even have symptoms and it just happens and they happen to go in and s do a sonogram and nothing's happening or there's no heartbeat. And then other times a very serious traumatic situation happens and mine ha happen to be that direction. So it, for some women, it just, it just happens and they don't even really know it. And for others, like in this case, it's, it's just, it's really bad. It yeah. was like days of cramping and then just a lot of blood loss. Yeah. And it was just more traumatic. It was because then they wheeled me back and I did, I had to do two sonograms and they were taking forever on the test. And for me as a woman, I was like, it's pretty obvious what's happening. Like I already knew I lost the baby and they were just taking their time. It was like every minute felt like an hour because they were just taking so painfully long in the ER. And to finally give us the news that we yeah. pretty much already knew. Yeah. It was hours later. Mm -hmm. they, they explained it in terms that made us feel better. Um, I think she said one out of every four. Yeah, it's like one or two out of like every five or eight. I can't remember. But so it's, it's a pretty, pretty high number yeah. um, that does result. And a lot of it is when you're under 10 weeks is the most common. Thank goodness. Yes. Because, I mean, it's just way more dramatic the later it gets, obviously. Um, and she did also say that uh, there's nothing we could have done. Like, once mm -hmm. the process starts happening, it just, it's going to happen. It's going to take its course. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. So, there, you know, don't even try to replay in your head, like, well, I shouldn't have gone on that walk, or yeah. I shouldn't... You know, shouldn't have done this or that. There's, there's really nothing. It's just, you know, one of those freak things that happen, and and we look at it as, you know, obviously devastating at first, um, but also, I don't want to say blessing, but you know, the chances of a uh, birth defect or something like that would have been extremely high had it not happened. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it did happen. It's kind of nature's reason. course. If you, if you want to look at it like that, it just wasn't the right time. Uh, I was ready. Yeah, we were both ready. <laughs> I mean, when you but first, as a woman, I'm work. sure as a father too, like as soon as you see that positive pregnancy test, like yeah. your mind it's goes a million miles an hour yeah. and you're already planning room in your house, room in your family, and room in your heart for another already little baby. Already planning first fishing trip you know, <laughs> in your mind. So, and then, you know, for it to be taken away from you, it's just, um, I think it's important for anybody that has gone through miscarriage to understand that it is okay to mourn. Yeah, and, and this, is, this is what's important that I feel like you should share. This is really for you. <laughs> it is me. Um, I'm just here for support, yeah. but there is an emotional roller coaster that happens, yeah, and you're not a super emotional person. I'm uh, not. You really don't <laughs> come to me very often, you know, as a cry on the shoulder situation. So when it happens, it's like it's very serious. Yeah. And uh, you definitely had some, I had some moments. postpartum. Well, because there's a lot of hormones, because your hormones are in that pregnancy phase, and as soon as you lose the baby, it's an immediate crash of hormones. And Justin and I were both forewarned about it, and we were both ready for it, I guess. Like, we were both kind of expecting it. So when it did happen, you know, there was one morning that I just, I woke up and I was like, I do not feel good no. emotionally today. And I had already been past it emotionally. I've already put it past me. And I was, I was already emotionally okay dealing with it. And then one morning it was complete opposite, but we knew it was the hormones. And I was like, I just need to cry. <laughs> and uh, I don't know why, like there's nothing that's causing this and there's nothing, mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing that's setting this off, but I just need to cry because that's just, it's an emotional thing. Um, so it is, it was, and obviously, you know, as having this channel and everything and, uh, you know, sharing, we already share a lot around here, but we just felt closed up, rightfully so, I think. Uh, but you brought up the, the thing, like me, with the brain tumor, and like, you know, I think we should talk about this, because sure. maybe there's someone else out there that is going through this, or maybe will go through this, mm -hmm. and will feel better. I know you had heard, listened to a podcast or something like yeah. that, where the lady had lost her baby like seven weeks so the more 
more stories you hear, the less uh, it just Abnormal. takes some of the emotional edge off to let you know everyone else know, like it's okay, like this happens, and uh, we're gonna try again. <laughs> you better believe it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's over. important to normalize it because back in the day, even several years ago, it was not talked about. And I think women that experienced it just got closed up and it's not good to bottle that up. Yeah, it makes it worse. Yeah. So, so it helps us talking to you guys about it as well. Yeah, it does. Uh, so that is basically the big news that has happened. Uh, we feel comfortable now making videos again and being <laughs> open with y'all. We just needed to have, uh, you know, needed, needed a minute um, to kind of reset, regroup. So, anyway, uh, we'll be back at it. That's that's pretty much what we wanted to share. Is there anything else that you feel like is important that everyone needs to know? I think it's just important to move past it, you know, accept that it happened, but to move past it. Better days to come. We've had some wowies. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Yeah. But you know what? That's what marriage is. And yeah. <laughs> we've been through a lot, and it just makes us stronger. Exactly. So every every battle, every battle scar, just you know, it makes you prepare it for the next thing. So uh, anyway, y'all, thank you for staying here. Um, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. Um, hopefully, we won't have any more bad news like this. It's just gonna be <laughs> fun, positive things. But fun these things, yeah, fun times, as Emmy says. Uh, but we're just glad y'all are here, and we appreciate all of your support. Uh, and if you want to follow our Instagram, it's linked down below. Is that still live? It's still live. Still it's still there. Uncensored. <laughs> We're there. still there. <laughs> okay. All right, y'all. Well, um, thank you for being here for the update. Uh, stay tuned for more action here at the Treehouse. And uh, God bless you. See you soon.